Hello and welcome to the third video in my NanoDrack build. Now in the first two videos I um, unboxed the thing and then we built it and here it is. You'll probably notice it looks slightly different. I have also got the shorter wings. Uh, these bigger wings and you can see I've started to cut the recesses in where the servos are going to go. Uh, give it a 40 inch wingspan which is the same as the mini drack and for this nano drack I think the shorter wings are probably a better bet. I should have probably got those in the first place. Uh, the shorter wings should give you more speed. Uh, the bigger wings should give you more soaring endurance and very different flying characteristics. But as I've got both now, I'll build it with both. Now in this video, what I want to do is go through the electronics that I have just got in. I haven't yet unboxed them. They've literally just arrived. And I want to kind of show you my choices. Now there's loads of different choices for the electronics that you can put in here. Uh, I'm gonna go with iNav, with a Matex flight controller, uh, Metal Gear digital servos, uh, Emacs, ESC and motors, but I'll put links below to all this stuff. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of go through what I've chosen and also explain the reasons why I have chosen it. Again, I don't think there's any real right or wrong uh, recommendations. Uh, there are some ideas on the right wing website. I think they could do an awful lot more to help uh, pilots kind of choose stuff. Uh, I'll also put a link down below, which is quite a handy one, to um, a little spreadsheet that somebody on the forums created. I didn't create that. So uh, if you did, get in touch and uh, I'll put a note on the video that actually talks about what motors and props and stuff to use on the nano track. So let's go on the bench and I'll uh, start taking all this stuff out and talk you through my thought processes of why I've ended up with this specific bag of bits. So let's have a look at what actually made it. I ordered quite a few bits. Uh, first couple of things out the bag are two little uh, uh, servos. So these are little Emacs servos, uh, ES08MD2s, um, Metal Gear's 9 gram servos. Hopefully, those will work nicely and get the torque that I need. Now, there should be four of those because I need one set for each wing. Uh, we'll see how they hold up. I might need a, a bigger. Uh, one with a little bit more torque, but that should give me a start for 10. So those are the servos out in the wing. The camera, I'm going to use my favorite, uh, the Run Cam Hybrid. Now the hybrid is something that I use on an awful lot of my models. It is my favorite camera for stuff like this. The reason being is that it actually has the two lenses. Now I've used things like the Run Cam Split and um, it's okay. Some of the Tarsi cameras and stuff that I've used are okay. Uh, my own personal view is that when you're doing this stuff, it's better to have a lens dedicated to HD and one dedicated to FPV rather than have one lens that's trying to be the jack of all trades and the masters of none. Now this can go in the nose and record in 4K locally and give me a really, really nice FPV image as well. Like I say, I've got these on loads of other models and I am going to go for traditional FPV on this model rather than the DJI stuff because in the mini drag build that I did, I've already got that HD stuff in there and this is more for me this plane is more about having the same kind of flying experience but with conventional radio equipment and conventional FPV so I can fly with my friends uh, a lot easier because a lot of them don't have the DJI stuff which means it makes it tricky. Next thing to come out of the bag uh, is the Matek F722 flight controller. Now the reason that I've gone for this is that I really like the Matek flight controllers. Those of you that watch the channel will know how much I like them. Uh, it was a toss up for me between either this and or the F765. Now uh, this is one of those where I'm going to have to spend a happy hour kind of soldering all the pins on but in terms of rock solid voltages for your FPV equipment in terms of loads and loads of UARTs for GPS, airspeed sensors and all that jazz, this actually has it. Now this has the same kind of stuff on it, uh, the 722 wing as the 765 did that I uh, looked at a while ago that I did as part of that build in the mini drag. That 
namely is that it supports two cameras and I'm interested in maybe having this camera stuck out the front to record HD and then maybe having a belly cam or even a rearward facing camera that I could switch to when the model is flying autonomously to kind of um, have like a chase cam so if my mate is following me I can kind of get a view backwards uh, and uh, have fun like that so this is going to be a fun one I've not built with this uh, but my experience with the Matex flight controllers is always just fantastic they just absolutely work next thing in the bag is uh, the Matex VTX now I'm using uh, this Matex one that's going to sit inside I'm going to be using the aero part from Menace RC for the actual antenna, so I'm not going to use this little cable or plug in directly. Uh, but this is 7 to 24 volts. This will go up to, it gives me 25, 200, and 500 milliwatts, and it'll also allow me to control everything. Um, I just thought while we're doing the Matex stuff, let me keep with Matex. Next thing in the bag is um, an Emax uh, ESC. Uh, this is probably overkill for what I'm doing. It's a little bit bigger than I expected, I'll be honest. Uh, 40 amp speed controller. This should be pretty bulletproof. Uh, so hopefully this is going to work quite nicely. Now it's actually for a multicopter. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue for the stuff that we're going to use it for in here. Uh, it's quite a weighty unit. I may look around for a slightly different ESC than this. Uh, this just feels a little bit big. I was hoping it would be about half that size, but having the bigger size should mean that it's more efficient in the cooling and uh, also give me a little bit more weight needed in the nose potentially to get the center of gravity. We have an RXSR. So this is going to be an FR Sky controlled unit. Not gonna put Crossfire in this. Uh, so that's going to be nice and neat and small. Um, yeah, very small when you compare it to the size of the ESC. We get to the end of stuff now. And also have the motor. Now this is an Emax 2212 2450 kV motor. This is beautiful. I've wanted to try one of these for ages. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I do like Emax motors. I've always liked Emax motors from the very early days of the uh, multi-copter stuff. So that should hopefully give us enough to get into trouble with. And that is all the electronics. Now the only other thing I'm, I'm going to need is going to be the GPS. Uh, I've got GPS's here, we don't need anything particularly special for the GPS, but that should get us going to start doing the build. So there you go, that's all the stuff that is going into the model. So join me in the next video where I'm gonna start setting up iNav and uh, getting everything ready. I'm probably gonna go through the iNav setup in a slightly slower way than I would normally, just for some of the new beginners who are coming into iNav. I know some of the recent builds where I've, I've gone through things a little bit quicker have potentially been a little bit too fast for some. However, if you go back and look at my iNav for beginners stuff, uh, it kind of goes through it. But probably worthwhile me going through this and rather than me just building this and having fun with it is also use it as a teaching moment and kind of going through exactly how I'm doing every individual step for iNav. That might take two or three videos potentially, but it'll mean that if people are struggling, I'll have something I can direct them to to follow the process. So join me in that next video where we'll start the iNav stuff and start plugging these electronics together. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.